when my boy Shu is in an episode of Tokyo Ghoul and I see him fangasming over Kaneki Kun, Kaneki Kun, and he, he's sniffing that napkin as if it was a pair of pants. Who, dude, just just instant ten out of ten episode. Just just straight up ten out of ten episode. When when I see Shu in an episode, just sitting there grabbing that napkin with Kaneki's blood and sniffing like. Like, the, the throwback, the, the, the throwback to the first season, just like, too funny. Just, that that scene was too damn funny, because if you don't know, I'm a bit of a shoe fanboy. I, I'm a big fanboy of shoe, and to see that scene, I was just laughing my ass off, because shoe, just his character, his personality, the way he acts, you know, his speech, his dialogue, just stuff like that, I just love him, oh. And the way he walks into Anteku, he's like, I'm here, bitches. That, that's pretty much what he does. You just see this giant freaking galaxy universe around him. He, he's just, ugh, I, I love, I really love Shu. Like the classy music, especially what he was shown in this episode right at the beginning. Just really brilliant first half. Second half is very good, too. I'll get into that. But getting to see Shu in this episode, like, damn. That, that, that just won me over in this episode. Like, this episode... When I saw Shu right at the beginning, pretty much, the, the episode couldn't have gotten any better. It really couldn't have. Because Shu is the main highlight to this series. I, I'm just saying, okay? I mean, Tokyo Ghoul Route A. It may not have a lot of Kaneki. It may only have him having one sentence of dialogue or maybe having him do, uh, ah, you know, every single episode. You know, a little bit of a scene like that. But, at the very least, we got some dialogue with Shu. I mean, hey. Why, why don't we make, you know, season two... You know, focused on Shu. That, that's what we should do. I mean, let, let, let's contact Ishida. Shu needs his own spinoff series. He, he really does. Not, no, seriously, I'm not joking. Shu really needs his own spinoff series. Okay, so let, let's be real here. Let's let's dive into this episode of Tokyo Ghoul Route. Hey, so this episode, a lot, a lot, once again, going down in this episode of Tokyo Ghoul Route A, and it seems like they try to explain the reason why Kaneki has... Centipede mode. They, they try to explain it in this episode in the first half. Now, there's only two scenes, two little segments in this episode that focus on Kaneki and his Kakuja state. So, let's, you know, talk about those details for I can, you know, explain it to you anime only. So, at the beginning of the episode, we see a flashback. You, you see how Kaneki, he's, he, he's fighting like an inner demons, pretty much. He's fighting his self and his mind, and he's breaking down at the beginning of the episode. And we see a flashback to what happened with, you know, the martial artist dude that was beating the shit out of Kaneki. We see how Kaneki is fighting him, besting him, and all st stuff like that. Kaneki was eating ghoul corpses in the flashback, and it continued to onward and onward. There was no dialogue in it, so it didn't really explain it. And... I felt like they cut out a lot of the inner narration that was for Kaneki. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I I've said it multiple times, but Kaneki's narration and inner monologues and stuff just been completely axed out of the series. I don't know, because that, that was one of the main factors I loved about the manga when I was getting to know Kaneki's character. And definitely Kaneki is one of my favorite characters in last year. Oh, he's instantly one of my favorite characters. And to see how majority of his character has just been axed with Season 2... I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But the thing is, okay, they, they explained to us that Kaneki has been eating ghouls for the majority of being an Ogirdi tree. Kaneki says some dialogue that has some very deep meaning when he's explaining his Kakuja situation. He states like, no, I'm not the one that's been eating ghouls. I am the one that's been being eaten. So pretty much the meaning of that is Kaneki, in the act of eating so many ghouls, he is having these memories and thoughts of ghouls eating him. It's eating at his sanity. And that is what is currently going on, as you can see. So this Kakuja power is kind of making Kaneki lose it. Or this half Kakuja, pretty much. That was revealed a couple episodes back. So I'm just letting you all know right there. They tried to explain it that Kaneki has been eating ghouls, I'm guessing, since he entered Ogiri Tree. Ever since he ate Jason, he's been eating multiple ghouls since then. I and mean, that's how Centipede came up. Even though they didn't do it very subtly, like they, they should have, you know, shown examples of this. I mean, they should have, but I mean, hey, anime. It's an anime original. I, I, we all knew what we were getting into. I expected this. I did. So the, it's nothing really to complain about. It's just the point of it is I wish they would have tried to, you know, shoehorn Kaneki's centipede mode a little bit smoother. But anyways, th this, this episode, 
one thing I have to say, there, there's a lot of little subtle buildups if you look at this. Like, there's a lot of different emotions you could pull out of this episode. One of the main central themes of this episode, I guess you could say, is loneliness and love. Now, Tokyo Ghoul is no stranger to loneliness. L let's be real here, okay? Tokyo Ghoul, the main theme of it, besides psychological gory violence and stuff like that, it, it's loneliness. And usually when there's snow or you see a character sitting in a chair by themselves like Kaneki at the beginning of this episode, usually that represents loneliness. And in this episode, it was kind of like Hinami and Toka were lonely. Like, they were very lonely, and they were sad that Kaneki is no longer around with them. And at the exact same time, while they're feeling lonely, Toka and Hinami have this love for Kaneki, and that they can't express it because he's off doing his own path. They've been left behind. And so you see how the characters in this episode interact and just try to accept what is currently going on, like deal with the loneliness they currently have, along with the love that they pretty much have lost. And so the episode is very deep and emotional if you think about it from different angles, especially the scene with Toka and Kaneki in this episode, like when Kaneki and Toka meet face to face and they start talking. There is a scene if you look closely, Kaneki puts his hand on his chin. He puts his hand on his chin. If you remember a couple episodes back, it was revealed that if Kaneki puts his hand on his chin, he lies. And in that act of when he said that, he, he said like, oh, he's fine and all that. You know, he's not, you know, taking everything upon himself. You know, he's just being self-righteous. That's what Kaneki was doing. He was just, you know, building everything upon himself. And Toka called him out on it. She didn't say it. She didn't say he was lying. But, I mean, she knew he was lying because of the, you know the hand on the chin thing. So the scene had a lot of different little, you know, meaning behind it if you understood the, you know, reference to the previous episodes because of the hand thing on the chin with Hide explaining it. So episode overall, it's a very good episode. Like, it sets up multiple different things, especially at the end of the episode. You see how Shinohara, he goes to Anteku and he meets the big boss of Anteku, and the thing was, from that scene, he acted like, hey, do I know you? Like, he, he was very suspicious, like, do, do I know you? And let's be real here, well, majority of you, I'm not going to actually state it, but majority of you most likely know what I'm talking about, what that scene kind of meant. I, I'm not going to just straight up 100% confirm anything, I'm not, I'm, I'm just going under the table here, but uh, if you've been paying attention to key signs, you know, through the anime, you, you'll understand what that, you know, dialogue and that scene meant, which, you know, Shinohara and Anteku boss, okay? So, moving past that, no, enough with the, you know, under the table help, okay? The, this, this episode, you have it to where the Sin actually kind of gives off a rumor of Anteku. Like, she goes to the Dove organization headquarters and she gives off rumors, Suppose about Anteku. We don't get to see what dialogue she said, but we can assume, we can assume that it has something to do with ghouls because she came there to study ghouls and find out if ghouls can be artificially made. We also have it to where she lets off some form of like subtle hints about, you know, Anteku. And so it, it's very, very obvious that she said something about it, most likely ghoul related. And that is why, you know, Juzo and Shinohara arrived there to investigate and Teiku, so shit's going down, it's going freaking down. Now, another thing I want to talk about, oh yes, the, the offer, the book offer, Sin, in this episode, a lot of you, a couple episodes back, I remember on episode four, Wait, was it four, three, it's four or three, maybe five, I, I don't know, don't, don't quote me on that, but on one of those episodes, we saw the offer. We we saw like the offer smile and we saw Eto smile at the exact same time. And as we know, in you know, CCG, the RC cell detector, it didn't go off when she went through. So clearly she's not a ghoul. So that entire theory could just be just off the table. So now that you know that is said and done. Overall, tell me your thoughts. How do you feel about this episode of Tokyo Ghoul Route A? I love you all so much. Please be safe. She be out.